day off today. Yesterday, yesterday we did a 78k ride. Um, not overly long, but was certainly hard enough. The guys went fast, so <laughs> that was that. Now, tools, tools. We're going to talk about uh, the tools you need, uh, or at least essential tools for a basic workshop. So get a pen and paper out, because we're going to uh, go through the tools bit by bit, one by one, and you can make a list of tools that you'll need if you haven't already started a workshop for yourself. So, and the first on your list is rags. <laughs> Over to the tool rack now. Some people find it difficult to replace handlebar tape, uh, let alone change their tire and tube. And replacing gear and brake cables, mm, that's too hard. Take it to a bike shop or let uh, a mate do it. So um, there are other people who love tinkering with their bikes. So it depends what sort of person you are and you, how far you want to go with it. So anyhow, just uh, generalize each tool as we go. So over here we start with sockets, sockets. Very handy, mostly for old school sort of bikes, but not so much the newer sort of bikes. Um, then we go up to this, the handles for the sockets, spanners. Yes, spanners, I'd say yes, it's an essential. You must have a spanner set. Um, 6 to 19 is good sizing. Uh, if you want to minimise it, um, 8 to 15, no, 8 to 17 will do. Uh, so spanners, yes, you'll definitely need a spanner set. Um, adjustable spanners, very very handy adjustable spanners, you don't have to have all sizes 300mm, uh, 300mm is a good size to have so adjustable wrench, yeah you'll need it to take your cassette off of your rear wheel when changing your cassette and chain so um, yep, adjustable 300mm spanner, I'd recommend to put that on your must have list hammer, hammer, uh, most households have got hammers regardless hacksaw, not really sometimes uh, that's an old school tool that's for threading or cleaning the thread on a threaded fork don't worry about that one scissors everybody has scissors every household has scissors so scissors is worth mentioning you don't actually use scissors much on a bike maybe cutting your handlebar tape what else is there maybe opening a new package when you get some new bike bits <laughs> scissors are oh, handy to have hanging up uh, a syringe full of grease is really good. Get a syringe. A syringe is great for getting grease into hard to get places like in the bearings and things like that. So uh, I put that on the must list. A syringe. You can get them from the vets. Uh, where else you can get them from? Anyway, a syringe. You'll find syringes around the place. So you get them. Now uh, these are cable cutters for your inner and outer gear and brake cables. Um, I've got two pair because these don't have a crimper in the bottom, whereas these do. They've got a little crimper in there, so I use them for crimping and these for cutting. So a good quality, uh, strong pair of cable cutters are necessary. Put them, or one pair at least, uh, with a crimper. You can get them with a crimper already inbuilt. Put them on your must list. You must have a set of them. Pliers, side snips, and needle nose pliers. Pliers are a must. Most households, again, have pliers. Definitely get yourself a pair of pliers. Don't have to be super duper quality. Um, side cut is not really necessary. Sometimes for cutting the outer cable, when it's really hard, you must have a square cut finish on your outer cable. Needle nose pliers sometimes handy if you lose a bearing or something to get into, uh, or pulling cable through or whatever. Monkey grips, multi-function grips, no, not really necessary, uh, but handy. Screwdrivers, everybody's got screwdrivers. You must have screwdrivers, Phillips head and flat head. Um, I've got three sizes of each, including some, uh, as well as some jeweler's screwdrivers. Most households have these, so yep, um, some flat heads, small, medium, large flat, small, medium, large Phillips, and some small little jeweler's screwdrivers. Up the top here on this side now, um, these are specific uh, frame and wheel alignment tools. If you enter that, you'll know what tools they are and you know what you're doing anyhow, so we won't go into that. Cone spanners, yes, on the essentials list, you'll need cone spanners. Uh, 13 to 21 is good sizes to have to start with. And you'll need two of each, so they're on your essentials list. Put them on your must-have list. Cone spanners. Uh, chain ring peg spanner, a chain ring peg spanner. 
that's for taking your chainring off your cranks when it's damaged or um, needs to be replaced because it's getting too old. So a chainring peg spanner, very cheap from eBay. So just grab one, uh, put that on your must list. Okay, don't worry about that one. Uh, Allen keys, every house has got Allen keys again. Um, get yourself a nice set of Allen keys that covers everything on your bike. Um, there's not that many sizes. This one's really handy. It's a 456 three-way Allen key. Very handy to have. So Allen keys, yeah, Allen keys on your must-have list. These are cluster, cassette, and bottom bracket and spoke tools. Yep, you'll need this one. The Shimano uh, cassette lock ring removing tool. If you've got SRAM or Campanella, you'll need a specific one for that as well. So, But that's the most common one, Shimano. So you'll need that. Put it on your must list. The rest you don't need. If you're going to spoke tools, handy if you break a spoke and want to put another one in and tighten it up. Um, but if you want to go any further than that, you'll need to know what you're doing with regards to wheel building. So, um, now, uh, this is a chain breaker, very handy to have, there's a big one there, but I find the small one much actually better, much better. Um, so, when you buy a new chain, quite often the chain is longer, actually, it's always longer than what you need, so you'll need to take out one, two, or maybe up to three lengths out of your chain before you put it back together and it fits your bike properly. So, you'll need a chain link remover so put that on your must list as well. This is your chain stretch tool. It measures the stretch of your chain, how worn your chain is. Important to know so you know when to replace your chain. This one has small little increments. So it's very handy. I like that one so you know exactly where you are on your chain wear. Um, yeah, put that on your must list. A chain wear link, a chain wear tool. <laughs> Right, now going up to here, a steel ruler is very important, have some sort of a ruler. Uh, I like steel rules because they're nice and flat as well. So these are handy, it's a little caliper, this has cost me like a dollar fifty on eBay or something ridiculous. Plastic caliper, that's all you need. Um, and it measures the inside and the outside diameter of your sealed bearings. Um, so you can order sealed bearings if you're not sure what size, you just measure it and go, oh that's what it is and you look it up from there handy to have so for like for, for a dollar or two just grab one so that's a caliper BCD tool very handy to have um, yeah you could put that on your must list if you want to change your chainring because it's worn out or it's damaged um, you'll need to know the distance between the five or the four um, pins that hold your chainring to your cranks like it's a 130, 135, 144, 128, whatever it is. Anyhow, that's got the different sizes on there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a high, I'll put that on your muscle if, if, if you can afford one. Yeah, go for a BCD tool. You need to know the BCD when you order a new chain ring. T tool, specific little T tool. Um, it's a bit like an Allen key. Some bikes uh, have a T fitting and some don't. So. Uh, now chain whip, you'll definitely need a chain whip, you need a chain whip of some kind when you replace your cassette cogs. Um, so yeah, put that on your must list, a chain ring, a uh, chain whip. Now they're old school headset and bottom bracket tools, you don't need to worry about them. Uh, towel rack, yes, get yourself a towel rack, I just, let's say you can rip your towel out. There you go. And then you can put things on there like you want to put if you're cleaning bearings or something put them on there um, it soaks up all the chemicals or the petrol or whatever um, and then you just scrunch it up and chuck it in the bin and get on with things so yeah really really handy don't use tissues tissues come apart and leave uh, wood fibers all around the place uh, nice clean cotton rags are good too but I find paper towels uh, are really good and of course clean rags WD-40, uh, don't use WD-40 much, it's okay for sliding bits and for freeing up rusty nuts and bolts, but other than that, for a lubricant, it's got fish oil in it, but um, don't really find it long-lasting, not very good. Various other lubricants, uh, one that I find is really good, silicon leaves a nice finish, especially for staunchant on your on mountain bikes forks with a sliding bit, silicon's really good. Um, just spray it in, spray it on, leaves a nice slippery coating. 
So some sort of spray lube is good to have around the place, put that on your essentials list. And with your syringe of grease, I buy my grease in the tube so you can get it into your syringe. Uh, otherwise it's difficult to get it in. And of course, the chain lubricant, I recommend paraffin wax lubricant. So that's yeah, chain lube. And lastly, it's normally hanging up here, is the wheel stick tool. Very handy. If you're going to take bottom brackets apart and headsets and service bearings and replace bearings uh, and that sort of thing, it's not that hard. Uh, not as hard as you might think. So you'll need this tool. You can go and buy specific tools. Um, it'll cost you a fair bit to buy them individually, or you can make this. Now watch the video, a wheel stick tool, making your own. I think it's a DIY project uh, video. Um, wheel stick tool, because you can take this apart and make other tools. We'll go into that in a minute. That's a must-have, by the way, if you're going to take uh, bottom brackets and headsets apart. And to build wheels and true wheels properly for your workshop, you'll need a truing jig. They're not cheap. There's no way around it, but they're a very good investment if you want to make proper wheels uh, accurately. So you can build and, and fix true your wheels in your own bike. Uh, and just leave your wheels in your bike and do them from there or in the dummy bike. But if you want to do them really well and look professional, a truing jig. Okay, so now a few little extras. Here's a file for filing metal. Metal things, it's a fine cross thread and it's flat on one side and curved on the other. So a file, very handy, not essential, but as, uh, for a workshop it's essential. A uh, sharp knife, in Australia we call them Stanley knife, so a sharp knife, very handy. Tape measure, handy if you want to measure frame sizing, frames and things like that. Now this is a must, carbon fibre paste, if you've cut a carbon fibre bike, most of us do. Um, so when you're doing handlebars, head stems, or seat posts, things like that, when it's carbon fibre on something like metal or carbon itself, always use carbon fibre paste or carbon fibre grease. So that's a must. Then we're off to up to electrician's tape, always handy for bits and pieces like handlebar tape ending. Now wire brushes, this is a uh, wire brush about the size of a toothpaste toothbrush. Um, this one's well used, so a stiff wired little brush, very handy, and this one's not so stiff, it's made of nylon, very handy as well. And they're great for the workshop situation. Pen, pencil, and a texter, and a notebook, because no one's got a perfect memory for me to write something down quickly. And here's another one, the humble puncture kit. You'll need that, unless you want to go buying a new tube every time you get a puncture, you'll need puncture kit. Put that on your essentials list. Workbenches themselves, um, this one here, this one was something throw, someone was throwing away, some other sort of cupboard or benchy thing. Anyhow, I got other bits of wood and cut them all up and made this. And so height's important, that depending on what height you are, this is about midway on me, so about waist height thereabouts. Um, and then put some carpet on top, nice and soft, um, that's important. And I've got a metal tray, that's good to have, very handy in case you want to use chemicals for cleaning and stuff. A metal tray and newspaper. Newspaper is surprisingly handy as well. You can just drop stuff on there that's dirty, scrunch it up and chuck it in the bin. Uh, there's some drawers. These are old bedside cabinets, one on top of the other. Drawers are always handy. Be aware when people throw away old furniture, if they say, do you want such and such? Well, go, oh, I might be able to use that. So if you've got the money to buy some nice benches and whatnot, that's fine, but this is another way of doing it. So there's some spare spanners in there, more screwdriver in bits and uh, scissors and pliers, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Drawers are always handy. This sort of stuff with the little separate little bins and all that, uh, looks good, but nah, not necessarily. Not all that functional as far as bicycles are concerned, but if you want that sort of thing, that's fine. But drawers, yeah, drawers are always handy. And a pump. You've probably got a pump of some kind, maybe you take it with you in your back pocket when you go riding. But for your workshop, you probably want something more substantial. So, a floor pump. Great to have a floor pump. Very advantageous, especially with a gauge. So, a floor pump will pump your tyres up quicker, and because of the gauge, you can get an accurate measurement of what pressure you're putting in, especially is that so with road bikes. So, a floor pump, yeah, I'd say you really should have a floor pump in your workshop as well. Uh, another one is a torque wrench. Yes, torque wrench. With your torque wrench, um, you'll need to make sure every time you use it that you reset it to zero, wind it back to zero. So 
on the settings once you say six nanometers whatever and you've done your job wind it back to zero before you store it away because the spring inside will be compressed on a setting whereas you wind it back to zero the springs relax and so it'll remain accurate when you use it next time so always wind it back to zero <laughs> so torque wrench a must for carbon fiber bike repairs and things now the most misunderstood thing tire levers the humble tire lever i see so many guys out there and they're fixing their punctures they put their new tube in and they put the tire lever in and they puncture the tube putting it back in why so many times because they're using a tire lever with a sharp end see that end there I don't know if you can see it. it's squared off there it's very sharp and that pinches your tube quite often here's another one that's a square one too and i'm surprised it's michelin square what you need is round have a look at that one can you see it? it's rounded lovely and it gets in and it don't, won't, pin, won't puncture your tube and here's another one this is a set from china they're also quite nice and round a little bit thin at the top but they'll stu still do the job nicely so a nice rounded tie lever another advantage is when you put it in your tie like that a rounded one instead of with the square one going <laughs> a round one you'll put it in and you'll just slip boom right off bang and you'll be able to take your tire off so two advantages so definitely make sure when you buy a tie lever that it's rounded on the head so lastly going back to the wheel stick tool here here it is in a little box with a little glass lid looks really nice these are all the bits so far we've got for the tool uh, more will be added later but so far you can press in and remove all your bottom bracket bearings put in your headset and take uh, dings out of rims as well watch the video it's really good make this tool it's great for whether you've got a home workshop or a pro workshop so for instance let's have a look so with this one you can press in BB30 bearings This one here is for pushing in the smaller diameter ball uh, bearings, ball bearings, <laughs> seal bearings like this one, as opposed to a larger one. So that's that one. That's basically a headset press to larger washers, the right size diameter. So press in your headset. To remove your bearings, you use this. And you just hit it with a hammer it's just a soft piece of dowel that's all you really need it's a piece of wooden dowel and you tap your bearings out watch the video and that's the wheel sticks tool itself for taking dings out of rims if you hit a bump and it puts it down in your rim you can take it out so that's the wheel stick tool itself so make the tool and start your collection because there's going to be more tools in the future that we're going to make with these bits so, how'd you go with your list? Here's two charts that have all the essentials mentioned. Or you can always go to Facebook and type in the search bar Oz Cycle, and then you'll find all the charts and reference material there. Well, hopefully that's helped you on your way to developing your own workshop. So they're the essential or the basic tools. There's a lot of other tools that didn't mention because they're specific to certain brands of components you're running on your bike. For instance, these two tools, the Shimano bottom bracket cup remover and the Shimano crank cap remover. So you need to do your homework as to what tools you specifically need and buy them as you go along. Here's another one, a gigantic 14mm Allen key. What's it used for? Well, it's on the cassette body, on your hub, on a mountain bike. If it's broken, you can remove it with the Allen key, put a new one on and do it up. So if you need that, 14 millimeter Allen key. <laughs> so now just as important as your tools is lubing and re-greasing and cleaning your bike. So that's going to be part two of this video series, Bike Tools. So watch that now and I'll see you there.